Uh, let's uh, start uh, the uh, third lecture of uh, Jan Fyodorov. Uh, so okay. We'll continue. And he's going Thank to you. Give another talk after lunch uh, at one o'clock. Oh, right. So after these uh, two lectures of preparations and, uh, and discussing properties of Geneva Ensemble, I, I really start uh, discussing the problem uh, which was uh, motivation for all that. Uh, the problem of uh, studying uh, or saying something about uh, ab about a um, system of coupled ODEs, which uh, I will write in the following form. Uh, so X uh, is just uh, uh, RN, uh, N component uh, real vector, and we have um, the system of N coupled autonomous uh, ODEs. Uh, following uh, really this idea of May, I uh, separate uh, this simple linear part proportional to uh, with, with uh, coefficient mu, which uh, basically um, is such that if we forget about interacting part, uh, which will be eventually nonlinear, this is uh, precisely the generalization of May model which we propose. Uh, so, in absence of this, there will be simple uh, exponential relaxation to um, equilibrium at zero. But now, uh, let us try to build some uh, class of models um, just following uh, simple guiding principle. Uh, they should be rich enough. And at the same time, they should allow analytical treatment, so uh, should be tractable. Uh, this is the general idea behind uh, basically random matrix theory, so try to, uh, let us try to extend it to nonlinear setting. The first um, simple uh, type of, um, or probably the simplest uh, and interesting, but not uh, most general and not most interesting type of dynamics is just purely gradient dynamics. When we assume that f, vector field f, uh, is uh, a gradient of some function v of x, uh, potential, and uh, being interested in random coupling or system of uh, randomly coupled uh, ODEs, one may assume this to be, I mean, a good model will be consider V as a random Gaussian uh, field uh, with mean zero and prescribed covariance, uh, which in principle one can consider different types of covariances, but of course the most na natural, or probably not the most natural, but the most studied and um, E, uh, the easiest to treat uh, by analytical means will be uh, just Gaussian uh, stationary field, or even uh, not only stationary, but also isotropic. It means invariant with respect to rotation. So basically, its covariance depends only on, um, only on Euclidean distance in this space. So uh, in this situation, uh, our dynamics can be written down as just gradient descent in uh, landscape. Or, I mean, it's, uh, it's always, uh, for these gradient dynamics, it's useful to think about really this um, um, uh, as a descent in some landscape. I mean, it helps. So this L is just mu x squared over 2 plus uh, v of x. And uh, we can visualize it. Uh, so the first uh, term is just uh, parab uh, okay. Uh, mu is positive. We always consider uh, positive mu control the relaxation uh, in the absence of interaction towards the origin. So from the uh, point of view of this gradient descent in this uh, potential combined potential uh, consisting of two parts of random part uh, and uh, of uh, fixed parabolic part. So uh, how one should uh, think ab about this? So we have this uh, parabola with uh, uh, curvature controlled by mu. And then on top of it, we have a stationary uh, and uh, eventually isotropic uh, process. So uh, it's clear that uh, for large x, 
this is of course parabolic uh, confinement will always dominate. So far enough, uh, everything will be just uh, driven to, um, uh, uh, driven uh, here, uh, just uh, towards the origin. But uh, close to the bottom, random potential will generate uh, some ripples. So may generate local minima. And of course, if we think about high dimension, will be many of them. And in this, in this way, uh, basically by changing mu, uh, making, uh, say, um, with uh, decreasing mu, making it uh, confinement uh, less confining or more shallow, we will have larger and larger regions affected by this uh, addition of random potential, which is stationary. Uh, so this is an interesting model by itself. Uh, this type of models appeared in physics long ago as some uh, models related uh, to uh, some versions of spin glasses and uh, attracted some attention and one can uh, study uh, various properties of this model. However, it's clear that uh, from the point of view of just system of coupled differential equations, uh, and especially having in mind this application in neural networks uh, and uh, to, to ecology, it's clear that gradient descent is only very special uh, uh, type of um, dynamics. So we uh, need to look at some uh, more general uh, model and uh, then the question arises how to build this model. So uh, a possible way which we followed, um, when I say we, uh, I just refer uh, basically uh, uh, the, uh, to the proposed construction uh, in, in our work published last year with, uh, in collaboration with uh, Boris Horozhenko. Um, so the idea is, uh, is the follows. So uh, we'd like to have some uh, nice and uh, quite general model for the vector field. So what one can say about vector fields in, um, in uh, Euclidean space? With every vector field, one can associate uh, so the na natural uh, generalization of this gradient uh, dynamics comes from a uh, language of differential forms. So let me just use it. So with, e with every uh, vector field f uh, smooth enough with components uh, f1 to fn, one can uh, naturally associate in Euclidean space, uh, generically on, on any Riemannian manifold, one can associate uh, just one form, one form which is just sum over, over i, f i, dxi. And uh, on the other hand, uh, functions, I mean, just uh, like, uh, like, like this potential v of x, uh, just color functions of variable. Uh, these are zero forms. So uh, the relation I mean, for gradient dynamics is just uh, basically uh, that uh, we are considering if we are only restricted to gradient fields, uh, basically we say that this form is uh, external derivative uh, of, of zero form, so basically uh, it's it's special special type. If it's gradient dynamics, it's special type. It's sum over uh, dv over dxi uh, dxi. This is special type of form, which can be thought as basically uh, acting. So if this form is omega, uh, omega, then uh, this is just external differentiation operator d acting on zero form alpha. Uh, so it's just special case, but uh, it's well known that uh, usually people consider this on uh, compact uh, and um, um, com compact Riemann manifolds without boundary, but with due effort one can also discuss it in just full Euclidean space. It's well known uh, that um, there exists uh, the famous uh, uh, Hodge, or uh, sometimes uh, called Hodge uh, Kadaira decomposition of uh, vector forms, such that if I just reduce it, I mean, it's 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 a beautiful and uh, uh, general statement, but uh, I'm interested in particularly in one forms. 
Uh, then basically, although what, what I write uh, will be uh, generally valid for uh, K forms, so the composition is that uh, every form can be written down as external derivative acting on the form of uh, dimension. So if this is a K, uh, K form, in our case K equal 1, then it's derivative of K uh, minus 1 plus um, a co derivative or Hodge differential operator uh, delta acting on uh, some other form beta, which is k plus 1 form, and then plus another form gamma, which uh, is uh, known to be harmonic. I uh, will explain what, what harmonic means. Harmonic. Uh, so in our simple setting, when k equal 1, we need uh, beta. Uh, two form, two form is just can be written down explicitly as sum of, uh, okay, usually on one writes i smaller than j, a, a uh, i j, um, or maybe I use uh, different indices, l, 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 k, it will be better. Uh, a, uh, l, k, then dx i wedge product, uh, dxl wedge, wedge product dx k. This is uh, uh, general uh, two form. Uh, I've, I will prefer to, to make summation uh, just uh, over, uh, over all k, l and k, and then consider that a, l k uh, is anti-symmetric. It will be more natural for me. A L K equal to minus A K L. Where L A K is coefficients are some smooth uh, functions of uh, of coordinates x. So uh, if a Riemannian matrix is given, then one can write explicitly action of uh, this uh, Hodge uh, co-differential operator. Uh, and especially simple situation when we uh, just in a flat uh, Euclidean space uh, action is um, this action is very simple. So basically, um, acting delta on B is uh, just sum over I J D J uh, A uh, J I uh, D X I. So this is the action, uh, and then. We just see, uh, so uh, this provides a uh, very general uh, decomposition of uh, any one form and therefore representation if we go back to coordinates for our vector fields. So uh, the only bit which one should discuss is harmonic, really harmonic functions. Harmonic uh, means that they, uh, they are uh, basically nullified by, by Laplacian, which is uh, known to be given by, by this uh, combination of differential and co-differential operator. But this is, uh, I mean, in usual setting is just satisfying Laplace equation. But uh, if we impose a condition that we are interested in fields which do not grow uh, or you, uh, either remain constant or decay uh, at infinity, then basically uh, this uh, harmonic, uh, since ha harmonic functions are always, uh, if they are bounded, they are constant, so they are not interesting, and one cannot consider this in our setting if we are interested in, in these fields. So summarizing, we get explicitly the following, the following model. So let us consider the following uh, Fi's components of our vector field, which, which just follows from this. Uh, this is dv over dxi. This is gradient. This is what comes from this, uh, this part. And uh, exactly what we need to generalize it, uh, sum over um, j from 1 to n, uh, daij of x over xj, where a ij uh, equal to minus agi. 
This uh, second part is precisely what comes uh, from this part of the decomposition. So this is really the model that we'd like to consider. So we'd like to consider this is useful model for our right-hand side. Uh, it includes a uh, gradient part, uh, which is responsible for gradient descent, and non-gradient part. So basically, just to give maybe some intuition for some uh, physicists who are in the audience, really, this is higher dimensional analog of what is known I mean, uh, frequently mentioned in uh, electrodynamic courses as uh, in three dimensions, uh, it's uh, so-called Helmholtz uh, theorem that any vector field can be represented as a gradient part and a, a curl of some, of some uh, potential, uh, vector potential. So this is really a high dimensional generalization of it. Uh, and uh, let us work with this model. So uh, what will be our assumptions on this model? Assumptions will be um, that V and all A's are, uh, all A's and V's are um, Gaussian random fields, independent on each other and also component-wise for different indices independent, just respecting this anti-symmetry. Uh, and they are not only uh, Gaussian, but they are nice Gaussian. They are um, uh, stationary with uh, covariance, which makes them uh, smooth in every realization, so one can differentiate them. Uh, and also, they are isotropic. So basically, it amounts to, to uh, mean zero. So it amounts to. Uh, specifying their covariance. Um, so uh, this will be the, our model, in particular. Our, so uh, covariance, so we should uh, specify what is V of X, V of Y for two um, um, covariance structure for two, for two points in our space, and this we will we will call v squared some parameter, uh, gamma v depending on x minus y squared. This is our assumption of uh, homogeneity and uh, isotropy. And similarly for aij, aij uh, of x, a and m of y, um, okay, uh, to respect um, anti-symmetry, I should put here uh, in anti-symmetry and independence of all components. Um, this is taken care by the following Kronecker deltas. Um, this minus sign, of course, just uh, consequence of, anti of assumed anti-symmetry of AIJ. As it should be times para, uh, another parameter a squared times gamma a of x minus y squared again. Okay, we assume that uh, this gamma v and gamma a uh, covariances they are independent. Uh, they are the same for all values of n uh, of dimension. Then it's known uh, that they will be given uh, uh, can be given as some uh, Laplace, um, uh, Laplace uh, transformations of some uh, positive densities, spectral densities. And we have uh, this finite mass, and we have also normalization. We will assume uh, convenient normalization, just that uh, second derivative of gamma A of V at zero is equal to one. Then basically, uh, relative magnitude of uh, of this um, uh, potential or um, uh, divergence free. Uh, in, ph in physics literature, uh, in fact, uh, frequently one uses um, uh, notation for potential part, uh, one calls it uh, longitudinal, and uh, this uh, part which generalizes the curl and responsible for rotations, 
um, uh, it's called transversal. Uh, just uh, it, it basically comes from using uh, Fourier representations for it. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, they are called probably the most um, the terminology which I uh, will use either gradient and solenoidal part or uh, divergence free and uh, curve free parts. Okay, so we have now uh, specified our model and we can start asking um, questions that we'd like to, uh, or, or we'd like to answer uh, many more questions, but which we will be able to answer. And the first uh, question of this sort is just counting equilibria. Uh, counting equilibria of this system. What are equilibria? Equilibria are solutions uh, or just uh, positions, uh, vectors x, which solve the right hand side equal to zero. This is a definition of equilibrium. And we'd like uh, to solve two problems. We'd like uh, to provide some information on how many equilibria uh, exist in the system depending on parameters mu, uh, v square, and the a square. We will see. Um, maybe uh, it's good to mention uh, that we will see that uh, really uh, v's and a uh, they enter um, the theory in combination. So I will introduce the combination tau, which is uh, v squared divided by a squared plus v squared. So this is then uh, between 0 and 1. And purely gradient descent corresponds to a equals 0 and therefore to tau equal 1. So tau equal 1 is the limiting case of purely gradient descent. And tau equal 0 is um, the limiting case of purely uh, divergence-free field. And anything in between can be in between. So we will see that this is really a uh, second important parameter. The first parameter, just to remind you, will be basically the maze parameter, May para uh, maze parameter M, I will call it M, which is more or less um, uh, mu divided by square root of n and then total uh, total variance of, uh, of of the random fields. So this is the same parameter basically which appeared in uh, May's linear model, uh, but this will be another important parameter on which everything will depend. So uh, back to the problem. We'd like to count equilibria. Uh, to start with um, smoothly, for those who never thought about how to count zeros of, of a function, suppose we have a function, smooth function, something of this sort, such that it has only isolated zeros. Um, it doesn't have double degenerate zeros. Um, so this function, f of x, of single variable x. So how, uh, what is the formula which allows to count the number of these simple zeros uh, between, say, in interval a, b of real x's? And this is, uh, the formula is very easy to write. It is formally, formally. So the number of zeros in interval a and b is the following integral. It uses Dirac delta function. Basically, it's Dirac delta function of f of x. I assume that f of x is very smooth, uh, at least twice differentiable. Uh, delta of f of x modulus uh, of uh, f of x dx. This is a very simple and nice formula. Basically, it's nothing else as definition of Dirac delta function. And, uh, but it's, uh, it's really nice because for any uh, smooth enough function, if you understand uh, correctly the, I mean, uh, the meaning of delta function, it just gives you, of course, it's formal formula because this is distribution. But nevertheless, 
you can uh, very efficiently work with it. And uh, especially you can calculate uh, what is known as cuts rice formula is basically expected value of this. Under expected value, this is really uh, well defined. And uh, this is uh, the simplest instance of uh, cuts rice formula discovered uh, during uh, more or less uh, Second World War, independently by Mark Katz, famous probabilist, and uh, also well known, but maybe less known. Um, I, I, I think he worked for for engineering, but also with probability methods. Uh, Stephen uh, Rice. So they discovered it for different purposes. Katz uh, wanted to count real zeros of random polynomials, and uh, Rice was interested in characterizing uh, some. Uh, uh, how frequently uh, given random functions, say, noise uh, crosses a given level. So they more or less used uh, this formula without explicitly writing delta function, but using some uh, uh, Fourier representation for that, more or less. OK, this is just how to count zeros of a function of one variable. So what uh, one should do when, count, when one has a system of, uh, of equations, so f1 of, of x uh, equal to 0, f2 of x, and so on, fn of x. More or less, uh, uh, the number of uh, solutions of the system, again, assuming that every solution is um, isolated. So there is a vicinity around each zero. Uh, the zeros are simple, that there is no any other. Um, uh, any other zero. Then, uh, similar formula, uh, number of zeros in some domain D. This is, uh, OK, here is integral from A to B. Um, so integral uh, of, of the density, or basically of the following object, uh, one can write down, OK, formally it's product, multivariate uh, delta function, so product from 1 to n delta of fi of x. And now, uh, the analog of this uh, term is, of course, just modulus of the Jacobian. Modulus of the determinant dfi dxj. And then dx1, dxn. Formally, this gives you the number of zeros in any domain D. And again, uh, if, uh, this is uh, um, when one takes expectation here uh, over some distribution of f's, then this is known as multidimensional, multivariable cuts rise formula. Very natural analog. So, uh, with all this uh, in hand, uh, total number of equilibria for our system. Um, will be equal to, again, in the same uh, way formally as this formula, integral over Rn delta of minus mu x plus f of x. I just use uh, one single delta to denote this uh, mal, uh, product of deltas. And modulus of determinant of minus mu times identity matrix uh, plus dfi over dxj, this matrix. And then uh, Lebesgue measure. So this is uh, the starting representation. Now, if I'm interested in uh, counting only stable equilibria, uh, can I do it? Yes, of course. Um, the same reasoning shows if I'm interested in counting not all equilibria, not all zeros, but only the zeros which are locally uh, attracting for the dynamics, it just means that I should condition, I should introduce here just conditioning that, my, that this matrix is negative definite. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so again, uh, formally, uh, the starting point is practically the same. Of course, it may be that this conditioning uh, will make eventual calculation more complicated, and 
it does. But nevertheless, starting formula is the same. So now, um, I w ideally, we would like, of course, uh, OK, okay. now we are dealing with this counting problem for uh, random fields specified in our model with all these covariances. Uh, so the number of equilibria is all obviously a random quantity, depend uh, changes from realization to realization. And ideally, we would like to know the, the whole distribution of it. Uh, if not distribution, say at least the first two moments. But this is a very challenging problem. And this is one of the problems really which is open. What one can do, uh, it's much more modest, one can find expected value, mean value of this uh, random quantity. And why finding mean value is uh, much, um, it's not trivial, but much simpler, much, much uh, simpler technical task than finding, say, second moment, uh, I will try to explain in the, uh, immediately. So what is uh, the fact about Gaussian stationary fields which makes co co computation of uh, expected value of this number of equilibrium or number of stable equilibrium feasible, but um, uh, higher moments uh, challenging. This is the following uh, observation. For stationary fields, for, uh, for stationary isotropic fields, for which um, covariance depends only on Euclidean distance, it's very simple fact, very well known and simple fact, which I suggest to check as an exercise today. <laughs> Uh, for those who, uh, who don't know it, but otherwise it's well known, that odd and even derivatives, uh, they are uh, uncorrelated, and since they're Gaussian, uh, uncorrelated at, at, at the same value of x, locally uncorrelated at the same point x, and therefore being Gaussian variable, they're just independent. So if I'm interested in taking expectation and uh, assuming that, of course, I can uh, um, exchange integration and uh, expectation, I can separately average uh, the, or this delta function or product of delta functions, which contains uh, function itself. And separately, since they are uh, independent uh, when taken at the same value of x, separately average this Jacobian factor. And this, as I will show, uh, is interesting uh, problem, basically exercise in random matrix theory. If I'd like to calculate, uh, say, variance of this random number, I need to just consider product of these two integrals. And therefore, in the integrand, already uh, there will be points uh, uh, will play a role which are not um, the same point. And therefore, I need to consider covariance of this uh, of of the function itself and its uh, and this uh, and the co corresponding entries of the Jacobian at different points. One still can write it down uh, since these are Gaussian field, but this really becomes tech 